right, now that we know what is a projection matrix a camera projection matrix right since we have understood what it is. So, now it is time for us to venture into what is called stereo right, which is a very which is a very interesting sort of a concept and it works as follows right imagine that that you have you have two cameras it could also be the same camera that you have translated it could be two cameras that are on a stereo rig ok. A stereo rig is like a is like a hardware right on which you can mount two cameras it is called a stereo rig and uh, what that typically means is that right this is actually held you know uh, steadfast right in a sense on that rig. So, that the cameras do not move and the idea is that uh, and they are kind of uh, they are they are also you know, put in a way that it happens to be a pure translation I mean that is ideal that is the ideal situation for a stereo rig. But uh, then we will talk about what is called uh, we will we will actually read, discuss both this is what is called converging cameras and uh, there is what is called what is called the parallel cameras ok. The parallel situation actually makes things easier for us to solve converging cameras are probably more general because it may be difficult for us to make sure that the cameras are exactly parallel and so on. Therefore, our uh, sort of a discussion will in general take into account that there could be a mutual rotation and a translation right. Translation is a must in a stereo, but rotation ideally can be avoided, but uh, then right you may not always be able to avoid it. Therefore, right, we have what are called converging cameras as well as parallel cameras and stereo itself right consists of two things I mean, there is something called a dense stereo and uh, typically right this is what is common in the sense that for every when you say dense what you mean is for every this one the pixel in your image for every pixel right you want to be able to associate a depth map uh, a depth value. So, that eventually end up with what is called a depth map when somebody says depth map this is what they mean for every pixel in the image you get a get a corresponding value for where the scene point is right what is its depth from either camera 1 or camera 2 right depending upon the depending upon which camera you are going to say referring to. And, uh, there is something called sparse stereo which which is also possible in the sense that you know you may have you may have uh, the correspondences for a bunch of points and uh, right and then okay you might ask us to what kind of what kind of a depth do i get for those points alone and then if need be right one can I mean there are other other advanced methods that can do what is called region growing and all and start to fill in ok. But uh, we will actually look at both because I mean right uh, sparsity also is interesting. So, we will also look at that, but but for the time being uh, right uh, our focus is on what is called dense stereo that means we want to estimate a value of or uh, what do you say what do you say a sign a value a depth value to each of the pixels in the image. So, if you have n by n then you are looking at like n by n to be your depth map. Ok and a stereo right as I have been seeing for a long time it is like it is like having a camera set up like this and uh, let us say that right I have a 3D point in the world ok let us call this as x and x is some x y z ok this is a vector x y z ok and all our alignments and all would be ok now with respect to some coordinate system right we have to talk about. So, let us assume that without any laws of generality we can assume that the first camera is where our is where the world reference is located. You can always change it if you want, but for simplicity let us assume that the world reference is here that is camera C and that is C what is it that is the optical center of the first camera C dash is the optical. So, so right this is the optical center of camera 1 or what is called a left camera this is the right camera or whatever camera 1 camera 2 ref light does not matter but typically we, 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 we refer to stereo as a left right pair. So, so you so, so the optical center is here for the uh, for the second camera and that as I said could be the same camera translated or it could actually be to actually be two cameras that have been permanently fixed on a stereo rig ok and you are watching a 3D world ok and the idea is that you. So, for example, now if I if I join the ray right that goes from here to this 3D point and then similarly right 
the same point is also observed by by this guy by this other camera right so what that means is that okay that's a straight line by the way okay so you have a ray uh, right from the from camera center c from the first camera to x and then also right you are also observing it from c dash and uh, let us say that uh, let us let me let me just draw the image plane okay uh, so as i said right we want to draw it for a general situation okay now let me just move it a little bit up okay and uh, let me well i have a figure in the slide but i thought it's better to sort of do it like this and then you have something like this okay and let's say that this is my camera c dash center okay and of course you know and i mean i've not drawn it very correctly but then right, i mean you can you can imagine the the optical axis going through this and so on right that will be through the center of the plane and so on but but this ray is from oops but this ray is from but this ray is from the camera center to the c 3 d point right in the world and the idea is this right so so okay now we know that this is the image plane 2 or the right image plane this is the left image plane okay and the line that actually that actually connects the two okay is called the baseline all the baseline that connects the two optical centers of the camera right that is called the baseline okay now now certain things right to now Okay, wh what does it really involve? I mean, why, why why are we interested in stereo? Because we want to estimate the right depth of this point. Okay, with one camera we cannot do because if we just use this one view, right? But till now what we have seen is what is called single view geometry, right? Where we saw that if we if you gave me a three D point, then I could write down the image coordinates for that point, right? Given the camera intrinsics and the ca and whatever, right? With respect to some world coordinate, if there is an extrinsic, we could also include that. Now the world coordinate system is centered here. Okay, this is where the world coordinate system is for simplicity. Okay, with respect to the center of the first camera, which then means that C dash is some R and T is at some R and T with respect to the first. Okay, now, uh, yeah. So, okay. Now, what 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 do we want? Right. So, in order to be able to solve this problem, right, it involves actually two things. Okay, one is what is called a correspondence search a correspondence search and the other thing that it involves is what is called a triangulation okay these two are basically right essential for us I mean, in order to be able to compute the depth of this point because for example right imagine that that this cuts this image plane this ray of that 3D point cuts it at x, where x is some x y, right? Some x y coordinate on the image plane, and then this is x dash. This is the this is the image of uh, of x in in the second image plane of the same 3D point in the second image plane. But then but then when you see two images, right? We don't know automatically where is x dash. But if you knew x dash, right? Then, so that is that is the problem of searching for for a correspondence, right? That is the problem of searching for a for a correspondence, which means that uh, I need to be able to locate x dash in the in this other image before I even start triangulating. Because without that, how do I triangulate, right? Because by triangulation, I mean that this that that I have to kind of see, you know, do a back projection. I have to I have to back kind of project the ray. And uh, hopefully, there is no noise or something in a completely noiseless situation. The two rays will intersect in the AC 3D space, and that, in some sense, should tell me where that point is, right? Now, the but then the thing is, we do not know what to say x dash is, and especially if uh, you are looking at a kind of dense stereo, right? Uh, we don't have shift and all. Okay, so 
we, we will use it for something else, but not for really doing a, doing a dense correspondence search. Okay, so, what this means is that I want to be able to label to locate x in the other place and how would you typically locate? I mean uh, now it looks like a full blown sort of a 2D search in the second image looking for where is this x dash and to even look for where is this x dash would typically entail that you know you maybe take a small crop a small region around x and then try to compare it where is it in the other image and then maybe there is a good correlation or you can do what is called a, what is called a normalized grayscale correlation or whatever right. You may want to do any of those things that will sort of photometrically match to the extent possible and then you will decide that well maybe if the match is really decent right between this patch and that patch then you will say that probably right that the center of that patch is where, is where my x dash lies. And once you have that x dash then you can go back and you see triangulate okay. Of course, all this we have to do show kind of mathematically that you can do all of this which is possible, but uh, at the at the sort of a conceptual level right this is what this is what we are aiming to do. And uh, okay, now the first question is right. I mean you know when you have a situation like this is it really true that we have to do a full blown 2D search right. It is quite possible that you know we may not have to do that on the on, you know, at first glance it looks like <coughs> I have to look for x dash everywhere in the image, but now right we will actually look at what is called uh, what is called this epipolar geometry okay and this and this you know and this epipolar geometry will involve a few things of interest. <laughs> and uh, and then once you once you bring in the epipolar geometry then that by itself imposes certain certain uh, certain sort of say constraints on what uh, um, and why on, on you know where the where the image can be formed I mean it cannot be arbitrarily anywhere on the image plane and so on it has to lie along a, actually right you can reduce your correspondence search to a 1D search. Turns out that if you if you enforce the geometry epipolar geometry right, then you can actually restrict the search instead of going for 2D you can restrict it to 1D. But uh, then whether the 1D search rate is going to be along some line at some inclination and all right that we have to see, but at least right what can be shown is that with the with with the right epipolar geometric constraints thrown in the search can be reduced to a 1D line okay in this in this in this second image plane okay or or kind of vice versa I mean you can be in the first image plane I mean you can ask the same question from right to left also right you can have a point x dash in the right image plane. And, you can, and then you can ask where should I search for x in the left image plane and that again can be shown is not a, is not a full blown 2D search it is just a 1D search okay. All right now let us kind of look at look with that background right let us kind of look at what do we mean by this epipolar geometry 